last week. So um, hopefully we can see the same thing. It's, it's definitely in the later half of the season. We see these new players bring out these new variations, new characters, and just cause a bit of a ruckus. If you know what I mean. We've seen that a couple of times. I mean, Zarakamaka did it all the way back in week one. and obviously Zarakamaka, is... Pro Stunner, Gab Standard. Uh, I mean, even even Costas and Harris to a degree as well. Is he going to do it? He's gone He's gone Kung Lao and he has gone Hattrick. Yes! We get our Hattrick debut in ESL, I believe. How about that? Wow. I mean, it only took six weeks. Now, guys, for those that may be unaware, hat trick is all about throwing the hat, calling it back. Um, the main way you will use this is you'll end a string in the hat callback, which recovers really, really quickly, and then you start rushing the opponent down using meter burn callback, which gives the same kind of plus frames that Tempest gets. So the pressure, pressure-wise, it's actually very similar. However, this does give him a way to combo off his low much more reliably and safer, and means to combo off his overhead slightly differently because you get some unique combos in hat trick. Fight. Let's see just how much he knows the matchup. Just think, oh wow, Ooh. starts off strong with the meter burn spin. That was a big read. Drops it, but still bags himself the first hit bonus. That was a really, really brave decision there. They did pay off. And there we go, there's the gaps once again, seeing some real matchup familiarity there. Going for the double dive kick. Now, assuming there, he went for the hat and immediate callback after the double dive kick. So that must be some hat trick only stuff. It's definitely worth pointing out. Remember, hat trick does have the buzzsaw meter burn spin and the fact that it goes forward. So very hard to whip punish, very hard to uh, to manage at that range. Oh, jumps oh, up cleanly. Summoner Takeda goes in for the jump kick, catches the low into the jump kick, 35%. Storm takes round one. I mean, Storm took a, a lot of damage there though, but by what? What hit him? That's the thing. Oh, the back 2-1 ever so slightly whips. Now, Storm gets away with that quite a lot. The, uh, the whips teleport into down 1, because by the time you see it, you're not used to it. Now, he's gone for the double dive kick again. There's the callback straight into the wake-up attack. Storm challenging that pressure almost immediately. It's almost like Storm just doesn't want any part in dealing with the hat trick uh, shenanigans. Now, I respect the attempt, though, where Storm... Uh, sorry, not the, the attire is going for a lot of spins. And there we go. There's the callback. Oh, move Storm out of the way, so he doesn't manage to combo off it. Storm down one on reaction, don't give him the pressure. Just the thing, if Hattrick has a hat out and takes damage, it just comes back onto his head. So if you can get that hit, you immediately haven't got to worry about the pressure anymore. There he's going to go, there we go. Two bars just to secure that instant air jump back. That was a very swift game there for Storm, but a big part of it came from... Although Storm ate loads and loads of meter burn spins, the damage wasn't there. Because that's the thing, Tempest gets about 30 plus percent damage for a spin, but Buzzsaw and Hattrick, they don't really manage quite the same threat of damage. Well, I guess it's more of a, um, I really suppose it's more of a setup thing. So we saw every time there he went for the double dive kick to get as most, sorry, as much damage as he physically as could. As most damage possible. I didn't say it. I heard it. I almost said it, but I didn't. So he goes for the double dive kick to get the most damage. Now, he always also goes immediately for a hat call. So I think there was some setup there. There was some, some, you know, some science behind that, but the damage didn't really compete. So he got loads of spins, but didn't really count for much. It looks like Matty might be, uh, well, the tile, uh, my mistake, is actually opting to go to a character swap. Is he going to go to, yep, summoner Quan Chi. I mean, there's something we see quite often in the Is ESL. that going to be, a, the question is though, is that going to be a pocket summoner or is it going to be... You know, he plays one of his joints. Because we do see people like Summoner is obviously no doubt a really, really good character. We see a lot of people pull out a pocket Summoner hoping that it will just kind of get them a win. You know, I don't mean that disrespectfully. We see that a lot where people lose and then change to Summoner thinking it's just, well, I'm just going to pick Summoner and win. But Summoner Quan doesn't have a meter burn spin to deal with the pressure. No, and that's he what we saw him get most of his damage with. Now that's the danger. He's going to have to land that hit on Storm and make it count the entire round. Get the overhead. Speaking of that, he's going to go in, go for the trance. Here comes the heart of blockable business. And the question is, what is the mix up? Get the overhead again. Oh no, drops the combo. He drops the back two, but he does air to air with the jumping one. That jumping one having such good range on it. Hard knockdown into bat. The army game isn't particularly strong. He's going to go for the plus frames. Goes in for another 50-50. Gets the back three. Very swift round one there from uh, the tile. Yeah, I mean, definitely a, definitely a change of pace. I mean, um, someone like Juan very threatening when he lands the touch, but... I mean, his lack of defensive options won't really matter if he's not on the defense. Now, I would be very careful about doing those air teleports to Storm because the reality is you're giving yourself to Quan, and that's Ooh, not great. No, that's not a legit punish to the teleport. And Wally, a full combo for it into corner positioning once again. Now, there's no wake-up attack here. He has the environment interaction, but we're probably not going to go to it all that much. He's trying to jump out of the pressure. Goes for a down one, Ooh, but full jump in. Storm scouts it out. That's going to be a full combo there in the corner. Good damage there. This thing, I mean, the lack of wake up options, oh. that's just, that's a trade he'll take all day. Yeah, someone like one just has to hold those strings and wake up. I mean, that's the thing, he is a glass cannon through and through. Storm trying to sit full screen, and there's the whip going over the rune, eliminating the full screen threat. Get to jump back! Now, interestingly, if he went for a jumping punch there on the back kick, he probably would have been able to convert, but it does not matter. Gonna get the, uh, the conversion there anyway. Nice combo there from Tile, gets himself 34%. Meatless into bat pressure. That's gonna be another free bat. 
Oh, oh there's wow. the flip kick. Now, once again, tries to backdash. You cannot do that. Forward one is way too meaty. Hard knockdown. He knows it. Here comes the summoner to Kader. Gets the jump kick. All oh, the damage. He's that's still got a bar. That's what we call a taste of your own medicine. When summoner Quan Chi has to hold those hard to block balls. No punish on the teleport. That could be huge. No meteor again to confirm. Uh oh. That was not a great. Oh, nice punish there from the tile. Unfortunately, their storm a little bit hasty. That is actually going to close the game out. Now, I think that, to be honest, that was Storm's game to win. He had a bar. Like, I really thought he was going to go for some kind of hard knockdown again into the Meter Burn Kunai. Because the reality is, Quan Chi has nothing to get out of that Meter Burn Kunai. So, every single time we've seen the tile uh, be f fought against the Meter Burn Kunai, he's you block been it successfully every or you time. die. That's the thing. Your only option is blocking it. And if it's that difficult to block, it's not going to happen 10 out of 10. I, I, think, I think Storm made a mistake not going for that Meter Burn Kunai. I mean, Quan has to hold it. And that was a really clutch punish. I'm not sure whether Storm was pressing a button or whether it actually was a legitimate punish. But the back one, two into Trance, I like that. I mean, that shows matchup familiarity. And, you know, he understands how to punish certain moves, which you do need to do as Summoner. Bear in mind, Summoner is probably one of the hardest punishes in the game. And to be honest, we didn't really get to see much of the hard to blockables or 50 50s into 50 50. It was pretty much entirely just knocking him full screen. Um, he opted to go for the zoning pretty much every single time there. Well, that's why we saw Storm opt to go for the, uh, the teleport option so much, just for the mobility, but I mean, the, the, the teleports weren't really being scoured out too much, apart from the meter bar ones, so that's what we see people do quite a lot. They'll kind of feel themselves a little bit too Ooh, much. Nice counter poke there. And then chuck a life lead away uh, unnecessarily with something unsafe. Oh, and he goes for the grab. Unfortunately, he whiffs it. Here comes the overhead. Full combo there from uh, the tile. Opts to go for the full combo again. He goes for the hard to blockable. That's uh, a zero situation, so that would have been low overhead. Unfortunately, he didn't block it correctly. There's the bat again. Oh no, he just chucks the bat on the mid. -bat. Oh no, no. Hit confirming on the back 3 2 4. He gets away with it this time, but I really want to see more Quan players hit confirm that string. It's so unsafe. It's just asking for death. It's, it's very much, um, you know, living and dying by the sword, as it were. It's a big hit this time. Oh no, misses the string, but still gets himself 26%. Ooh, that whiff was so close. Eater down three, straight into an overhead once again. Storm has to break. I still watch out that that is safe now, but oh wow, I think he maybe tried to do a string into Rune. He just gets a raw Rune, which gets completely stuffed, and that does bring around. Now, Storm. sometimes when a move has more blocks done than you're used to, you you do the wrong thing. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that is what that situation was there for Tile. Oh, tries to whip punish with full screen trance. Doesn't quite catch it. Gets the edge to air back to trance. Now, I assume he's probably going to go for some kind of reset here. Nope, he opts to go full screen. Hard knockdown. I think he wants the corner carry. He wants to get Storm in that corner. Misses the confirm, but doesn't cost him any resources. But he's no, gets the back three. to be careful with those teleports. Tile's just waiting for it now. Here comes hard knockdown again. Tries to get the bat. Doesn't quite get it. Oh, wow. Ooh. Straight over that pressure. Gets himself a chain. I mean, look at the meter it's building. Crazy stuff. Oh, wake up backdashes again. Oh, some cheeky backdashes there. Hard knockdown. He has to hold the next mix up. Summon the Takeda. Oh, forced to break as well. Tal trying to keep himself in right now. Oh, interesting there that the Kunai didn't actually connect. Very unfortunate there for Storm. Tal's going to take the round. Yeah, clean. And he gets himself cornered as well. I've never seen that before. He must have been standing on just the edge of that. Oh, gets a jump in. Good read from Tile. Gets himself a, uh, a full restand. And there's the reset. Oh, straight into the uppercut. The uh, cojones on this man. Oh, I, I like how Storm recognizes that he's just, he's done it too late. There's no way that was going to work. He recognizes it with a swift down two to punish it on hit. That hurts. That really hurts. And he tries to do wake up button press. Cannot do that as summoner, unfortunately. And does it again. Challenges the forward one. Storm's going to go for a full combo. That's going to take this game. Wow. And just like that, Storm takes away all that health. Starts from the corner in a matter of seconds, just annihilates Tile's life bar. We're seeing some really tidy play here from the Tile, actually. I mean, normally you see people go for a pocket summoner or, you know, or just summoner in general after losing. And you see a lot of people kind of crack and they just don't really do anything. It's kind of more of a, I'm just going to pick summoner and win. And it doesn't really work that way. Well, that's but, what I mean. Like, un unfortunately... Especially in ESL, pocket summoners haven't really worked out too well. They never work out. And pocket uh, summoners never work out. Well, but in this situation, I'm really impressed with just the level of play from yeah. Tyler. Like, he's actually playing really well. Has gone... Is he going for a character select again? I nope. assume he's going to go back to, to summoner, to be honest. I mean, he definitely seemed to have the, uh, the, the, best, the biggest chance of making the comeback. I mean, let's be real. I mean, Hattrick's hyper to watch, but it's not as strong as summoner Quan Chi. I, I would definitely agree with that. Now, the thing is, what I would like to see from Tyler is more 
resets. Like, he's opting to end the combo and go for 38% damage, which is all well and good, but then he's going back to this neutral state, and it's the neutral state that is getting him hit. If you're playing a summoner, you can win on one trance. You can keep them stuck there the entire time. Yes, you're not going to do 50% every single time if you go for the reset situation, but it's the reset situation that's going to kill Takeda. And it's safe. That's the thing. The hard to blockable summoner vortex is completely safe. Oh, no, he presses a button there. Storm not ready for him to get hit, though. Already commits into the kunai. Meteor Burn kunai gets hit by that as well. Here comes the pressure. Oh, let's go of block. That's going to be a full hit confirm. Oh, tries to reposition. Doesn't get it. Oh, gets the jump in. No, oh, caught pressing buttons in between. Not quite sure what Matt was trying to do there. I mean, Quan, not a character known for fast armor, so he probably should have just taken the block. I really feel like um, Tyler's just making some bad reads on this pressure. But where's his health gone? He, where's his health gone? He just pressed too many buttons and got hit. Match point, Storm. Round two. Oh, gets hit by the thing. He has to try and keep him out of the corner. Now, that could have been a really good situation if the tile managed to keep him in the corner. Unfortunately, he's getting tagged. He's got all this bar, but unfortunately, just nothing to do with it. He just needs to start blocking on Wake Up. I mean, that's what's getting him killed. He wants to do anything but block in those situations, and Takeda's not going to 50-50s yet. There's absolutely no risk to just sit there and blocking when you've got that bar. Now, it's going to be a full combo, no doubt. Big damage. Big damage. This is going to hurt. Oh, goes for hard to block. Well, that's what we're talking about. Gets the hit, forces a breaker out of Storm. Oh, Ooh, wow. Nice NJP. Good reactions there from the tile. Just ready for that teleport, knowing that Storm's going to be hasty, and that's going to, well, tie it up. Last that's what, that's, round. Well, that's what we said in game two. I mean, Storm definitely feels himself a little bit too hard in these situations where he just chucks out that punishable attack right as he's, you know, making the comeback or sitting on a life lead. Storm gives getting, the game uh, away. getting tagged by the overhead there. Uh, it's interesting because when Quan actually goes for a jump in in that situation, oh, nice. Interesting combo, never seen that one before. But Storm does break, so uh, it does cost uh, Tile a bit of bar for just 22% damage. Now, unfortunately, this is bad for Storm right now. He's going to get sent full screen. Nope, goes for the hard to block ball, knowing that every single time he went for a low bat, and then right then goes for the overhead instead. Now, before this match started, I said, I want to see more resets. I want to see more resets into hard to blockables, into the 50-50s, because that is what Summoner does better than anyone else in the game. And in this game, we saw that. In the last game, he basically ended every single combo with a knockdown, turning into full screen, and it was that neutral situation that was actually getting him tagged and hit by basically everything. In that situation, every single, nearly every single trance went into a reset set rather than a hard knockdown Which either and it forced was a, a reset break, either forced a break exactly or just got him more damage in general because that's the reality someone acquires character you're not going to block 100% of the time and if you're not enforcing that you're not really making the most of the variation pick so it's nice to see the adjustment made storm does kind of need this win though to be a bit more comfortable uh, he's sitting on 150 points right now and he's going to have 175 because of the points he's earned in top 8 but he really wants more. I mean, especially in this this upcoming weeks where Foxy and Madsen will not be entering the next week because of NEC, he needs to be in the comfort zone, especially if something happens in these upcoming weeks. Oh, it doesn't block. I don't think I've seen Storm block a single 50-50 this entire set. I mean, just uh, well, definitely guessing wrong on that. Sometimes you guess right, sometimes you guess wrong. Unfortunately, every single time, Storm hasn't guessed right. Oh, and just right again, every single 50-50 is on the money for the tile at the moment. Oh, big damage. And there's the hard to block ball once again. I mean, a swift match point for Tile. Uh, well, I say flawless victory, but I think he got a little bit of chip damage. But regardless, it doesn't matter. But Storm has all the meter to make the comeback, but some of the Quan doesn't need Bar to kill you. Now, Storm just needs to go completely all out on the offense. He needs to make this count. Every time he's going into good damage on this Tile, it's because he's pressuring him and getting good reads. Speaking of good reads, a good jump in one for the Tile, knowing that Storm's going to go for the jump. Hard to blockable, gets hit by the overhead once again. Really well played there from the Tile. Storm really on the back foot right now. Off to save his bar. He's going to have to use it. Oh, chunky 42% meterless damage. There's a hard to blockable, doesn't finish the jumping munch, and that's a punishable string, but once again gets away unpunished. Oh, no, go to the down one. No doubt the tile tried to punish that string. Oh, he's got to watch out for those teleports, and oh, guessed wrong on a 50 50 once again, but no big damage for the tile. And there's a down two trade. Storm ready for the hit, confirm he's going to go for the hard to blockable. No, doesn't get the kunai. That's going to be meter burn kunai, here it comes. Oh, and he presses a button! This is now match point for both players! But I have no idea why Tile opted to wake up button press there when the Meteor Burn Kunai is under you, waiting to go off! Oh, and he gets hit by the overhead, but there's no hit confirmed there from Storm! Forces Has to, to break. break! He's got to watch out for those teleports once again! And corners himself! And there's the hit confirm. There was no way Tile was ready for that. Oh, and he gets the mix-up! There isn't a mix-up! The 1-2, you're not ready to block low in those situations! Now this is bad for Storm, he has no meter! Guess it's wrong on the 50-50, there's going to be a big combo! He has to go for the reset, this might even take it! Big damage on the lineup, makes it safe. Oh, gets the down one. Storm's got to make one of these big comebacks he's known for in the league to get this one. 
He has to guess right. Oh, and he presses a button, gets hit anyway, and the tile moves on. Wow, that was an interesting set right there. That was an interesting set. It was back and forth. I mean, I, I definitely think um, when you see someone swap to a character like that, your, your worry is almost always, has he gone from his main to something he's just trying to maybe cheese out a win with?